and welcome back to another video on astrology. In this video, we have a, an important guest with us, Dr. Vaivi Subbaro. And we'll be talking to him, and not only in this video, but we'll be doing several parts. Uh, it is going to be a series of videos. But before getting into the actual topic, I would like to introduce Dr. Y.V. Subbarov, he's a mining engineer with astronomy as one of the you know, ancillaries. And uh, he, interestingly, he retired as a visiting professor of astrology. And uh, you all know that astrology, the basis of astrology is basically astronomy. But uh, today we find astronomy existing separately from astrology. But here is a man who has the knowledge of both and as very well connected uh, astrology and astronomy. So I thought uh, we will gain a lot by discussing, you know, important matters of astrology with a person like that. And that's why I invited him to be with us in this, uh, you know, video session. And uh, he retired as a visiting professor of astrology in Sanskrit University, Tirupati. And after retiring, of course, as an engineer, he went on to do all this work on astrology. And uh, the good thing is he also has a very good working knowledge of Sanskrit and he's published several books on you know, Veda sciences in West Germany and also published several research papers, both, uh, both in national and international journals. But the topic seems to be always going around astronomy and astrology. Okay. So welcome, Dr. Vaivi Subbarov. We are very happy to have you with us. So thank you very much, sir. It's a pleasure talking to you. It's equally a pleasure for us also because, uh, it, you know, uh, we always try to learn from our elders and you have been a veteran in this field. And I'm sure uh, you will have a lot of interesting views that uh, we somehow missed upon. Okay, so over to uh, one and only Dr. Y.V. Subbarov. Thank you. At the very outset, I would like to discuss the very great uh, criterion in the design of subject of astrology and uh, subsequently with the design of the principles of astrology. We all know that life evolves on earth because of the sunlight. Without sun, there is no life at all. And sunlight in physics is called an electromagnetic wave of light of heat and radiation particles. The sunlight is the criterion for astrology. The entire design of the subject by the ancients is based on this. And sun is a constituent and the main part as a star. A star can only build up planets around it and not vice versa. So the sun as the constituent part of our solar system is naturally considered to be the source of astrology. So astronomy is well included in this. Without a clean knowledge of astronomy, many of the things in astrology will be at random and doubtful. Now we will consider how is it that certain things that are adapted into astrology for studies are not completely planets. They are stars, uh, satellites, there are some intersecting points and real planets, some are omitted. For instance, our Earth is excluded. Planets beyond the orbit of Saturn, Uranus, Neptune and Pluto are excluded. There is an argument in this direction that the ancients may not be aware of the existence of Uranus, Neptune and Pluto for the simple reason that they are discovered in astronomy only just a couple of decades. But it is well known, it's, they are as old as the Vedas, the ageless Vedas, I would say, that the ancients are aware of it and equally aware that they are of no use for astrology from the point of view as I explained to you now. Here, all the planets or other celestial bodies in our solar system that are responsible for bringing sunlight onto the earth to give effect to the inhabitants, the flora and fauna. 
sunlight is essential. And what are all the celestial bodies that are responsible for bringing the sunlight to the earth and for evolution are all included or adapted into the studies of astrology. For instance, sun is included. It is a star, Mercury, Venus, Earth is excluded, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn are included. Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto are excluded. We have also an introduction of the moon, a satellite which is not a planet, but it is included. And we are also including Rahu and Ketu, the two intersecting points. They are neither bodies, nor planets, nor stars. But they have a great role to play in astrology. We will understand it better by knowing that all these things that I mentioned are adapted into the studies of astrology since they are all responsible for bringing sunlight and dark. And sunlight is essential for us and it is a life. Astronomy and astrology are inseparable. Astrology is the derivative of astronomy. And astrology is the life side of astronomy. Life side means sunlight is for life. Astrology is for life. So the life side of it. So these two things will naturally make us understand that why we have actually excluded Uranus, Neptune and Pluto all. They are situated far away from the sun. The sunlight falling on these three planets is very negligible. And the reflected sunlight is practically nil. So they have excluded them. And the earth is the actual place where the effect of the sunlight is felt. So it is excluded. That is called the movie or the moving observatory for us. And Rahu and Ketu are included for the simple reason that the sunlight indirectly reflected by, through the moon is falling on the earth from dark fortnight to bright fortnight, thereby modulating the sunlight. This modulation of the sunlight is also important. Nighttime, we don't have sunlight at all. But the sunlight is there in the night also as a reflected light through the moon. And this sunlight through the moon is modulated from dark, dark fortnight to bright fortnight. That is full moon to new moon and new moon to full moon. So there is a variation of this particular light. And the sunlight itself is the actual basis for the design of the astrology. And all the principles of astrology are based on this sunlight and the dispersion of light and deflection of light in Einstein's theory of light, relativity, relativity and so on and so forth. So we find immense science in the principles of astrology designed for prediction. So this is the first part of it. The second part of it is the designing of the principles, the principles that are there, such as the significations of the houses, the lordship of the houses, the planetary periods of the Vimsotari Dasa system, and the special aspects of planets, all these things are based on sunlight, that is electromagnetism. In fact, electromagnetism is the basis of our life and livelihood and even for our health. This is in just a, you know, put, put in a nutshell, this is the essence of the subject of astronomy through physics like electromagnetism in astrology. Once we know the genesis and the origin of it, we will be in better place to actually accept certain of the principles of astrology and understand it better. Doctor, are you saying that the uh, Uranus, Neptune and all, you know, like for example, even Pluto got excluded because their light, the reflected light from them may not reach us or is it uh, from some other point of view? Practically nil. It is point seven zeros or so. Oh. Point seven okay. zero some such thing is the incident light. Okay. And you can ex ex you can uh, expect the incident reflected light, reflected light will be practically nil. 
Oh, okay, okay. That is the main reason. Okay, but today mm-hmm. software, most of the software, since they give us the option of including Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto, you you find most astrologers putting it, you know, placing these planets in the horoscope, and it quite disturbs the entire chart itself. Uh, so, here, I would like to share a small bit with you. Mm. These planets are excluded in Eastern Western astrology, whereas they are included compulsorily in Western astrology. It so happened, the recognition of or the status of Pluto as a planet is something like oscillating like a pendulum. Whenever the astronomical union meets in the world and the chairman has got the sympathy for Pluto, he will call it a planet. The other chairman at the next, when elected at the next election, he is very much averse to it. He disqualifies Pluto as a planet. So, New York Times in America has actually made a humorous comment on astrologers of the West saying that you have ascribed certain significations to Pluto when it is no longer qualified as a planet. To which planet are you going to shift these significations? <laughs> Oh, okay, okay, okay. They, 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 they related some, uh, you know, like an attribute, yes. uh, some characteristics of uh, to, to Pluto, and when it is not uh, included as a planet, okay, that's the point. Uh, Pluto stands there in a particular sign for nearly because its orbital period is three fifty years or three sixty years. Oh, it remains okay. only in one house for all people to generation to come. <laughs> okay, 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 doctor. But anyway, in astronomy. Why would they even not know whether it is a planet or uh, it's a planet? Why would that doubt be existing? Because it, as long as it goes around the Earth, uh, it must be considered as a planet. Why would they have a debate on that? Because there are many other obstacles surrounding the planet. Oh, okay. So a planet must be not only orbiting, but it must have moons or no moons. Oh, okay. But it must not have any obstacle surrounding it. Pluto is very much surrounded by that. Oh, okay. In fact, I published a paper, the status of Pluto as a planet, vis-a-vis Veda. Okay. Okay. Are, where are these books available? Uh, they are available in West Germany. They are available oh. on Amazon. Amazon. Okay. Good, good. I will uh, try to locate the links and share it in the description uh, beneath this video. Okay. okay. Yes. Please continue. And so in the genesis of astrology, I will. I would like to show you a particular uh, slide now. Okay. Uh, the top line consists of the astronomical symbols of all the planets of the solar system, starting with the sun here. It is substituted for the Earth, and this is Mercury included, Venus included, Earth excluded, Moon included, Mars included, Jupiter included. Saturn included, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto are excluded. Okay. So this is the essence of solar system and the celestial bodies that are within the solar system. Okay. And out of this, not are all the planets taken here for adapted into the study of astrology. We have taken the Sun, the moon, Mercury, Venus, Moon, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. We have excluded the other things. We find here the South Lunar Node or the or Ketu and the North Lunar Node Rahu. These two are included. It's a strange thing to find that why they find when Ketu is here, who asked the position of this Rahu here and Ketu here? Because okay. they are not seen in the space. They are not bodies, they are only intersecting points. But in the Vimsotari Dasa system, we find it starts with Ketu Ket Dasha. Mm. And we find Shukra Dasha, Ravi Dasha, Chandra Dasha, and mm. Puja Dasha, we get it, Rahu Dasha. So after Puja, we get Rahu. How it is included exactly at that place in Vimsotari Dasha system is a strange thing. And how the corresponding Ketu is here at this point in this planet series adapted okay. from English. So this we will consider in the next slide. Wow. This is interesting. Hmm. So 
So the yellow one is the sun's orbit, mm -hmm. and the blue one is the moon's orbit. These two intersect at this point, at this point, and this point, marked dotted with the dot, with a red red color dots. Exactly. One is Rahu, the north lunar moon, and the other one is Ketu, the south lunar moon. And this is the orbit of the moon, and this is yellow line is the orbit of the sun. These two orbits intersect at these two points, and they are exactly 180 degrees opposite. As the moon and sun move along their orbits, they come nearer and they go farther, therefore causing bright fortnight and dark fortnight. That is from full moon to new moon and new moon to full moon. And in this context, they are also modulating the moonlight throughout the month from okay. new moon to full moon and full moon to... So there is a change in intensity of the electromagnetism of the sun reflected through the moon. This Wonderful. is very essential, especially when you consider Varahamira's Brahachatakai he mentioned about human female menstrual, menstrual period and also the coagulation. There, okay. we will be able to understand it better when mm -hmm. we know. Very nice. Mars and, Jupiter, Mars and Moon are the cause for menstruation and they are the cause for conception also. Mm -hmm. So this is an important thing and therefore this Rahu and Ketu play an important role as to see that Rahu and that Moon and Mars do not in any way come in that line, line at all for better conception and delivery. This is how it goes. So the electromagnetism plays a great part in human female menstruation, menstrual cycle and also ovulation and conception and delivery. It's an essential part. Brother, in the Brahad Jataka Varahamira, he has clearly mentioned that every month, because of the moon rotates once in a month, there's the frequency of menstrual period is once in a month. And the duration of stay of a moon in a particular sign is about two and a half days. And for it to, to completely out of sight of moods in uh, uh, aspect, right? for Mars in aspect, it requires about four days or so. That is the period of menstruation. Wonderful, wonderful. When Mars is Mars and Moon are in opposition, there is menstruation. When Moon transit to Moon meets it and goes into conjunction with Mars, ovulation takes place. That means the woman will be very fertile for pregnancy. If no fertilization takes place, conception takes place, again it comes back and menstrual cycle continues. This is how the whole principle of these two planets are purely permanent magnets, whereas all other planets are electromagnets. That means they become, they go on changing the polarity. But these two permanent magnets have their polarity fixed permanently. So when moon's polarity is the same as that of the Mars polarity facing each other, light poles repel, that is menstruation. When these two, when moon moves 180 degrees in 14 days, medical science says, says that for two weeks after menstruation, the woman is capable of pregnancy, that is conception. Conception. Inception, that is called ovulation. So two Correct. weeks after that, Moon opposite to Mars moves in to reach kind of Mars in conjunction. It takes two weeks, so ovulation takes place. So the medical science also accepts the whole thing, and it is also proved in many of the hospitals that most of the deliveries take place during full moon, and menstruation takes place normally during the full moon, the new moon. That is, the bright half you find deliveries and dark half you find menstrual. There are also, not all women have got regular periods. Oh, so there is yeah. a natural cure also suggested by this electromagnetism. In the encyclopedia, it is said that for three days, from the 14th day onwards, of the before the next menstrual period, for three days, that is 14th, 15th, 16th, 
these three days after ovulation if the woman sleeps in an artificial light illuminated room her menstrual period will be regularized this wow. is a natural cure it costs oh. nothing for doctors also to try this okay. cases given up cases of no fertility i see so maybe infertility doctors can make use of this information yes you know, specialist yeah okay and uh, th- these has been uh, you know mentioned in brihat jatak also uh, yes. to a good extent about menstruation yes the, uh, yes, the person is ripe enough yes yeah. moon and mars really. houses and opaja houses also he mentions yes. that that's it moon should not be there to the natural mars in certain houses correct so especially in third house and sixth house 10th and 11th houses in from the nat- from the natural mars moon should not be there Mm. this point may be remembered when i say about the genesis of the principles of astrology okay okay there you find why these anupajaya houses uh, that is the uh, 3 6 and 10 and 11 are excluded oh, for uh, menstruation and all that for conception and other things that for the natal moon the moon should not be in these places it's a restriction provision okay. laid on these two planets moon should not be in 3 6 or 10 and 11 to natal moon why 3610 and 11 are from a fixed point they are considered to be the houses owned by mercury from aries lagna they are owned by mercury 36 10 and 11 are owned by saturn mercury and saturn are considered to be important unique planets yes unique planets that's why for menstruation that is for 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 ovulation conception pregnancy delivery and all these things these unit planets won't help anything that's exactly. why for the natal moon the transit moon should not be in 3 6 10 and 11 how these 3 6 10 and 11 has become a universal for all other lagnas not only for the uh, aries so mm-hmm. yeah okay. place war from where all these principles have originated they are generalized in later on for all rising signs so what you are trying to say is the actual basis of astrology is definitely astronomy only without any doubt okay that is why our life is also controlled by astronomy through the electromagnetic wave of sunlight and all that mm. even sathra with the treatments magnetic treatment and all that is there mri so on and so forth even in fertility also there is a magnetic treatment so magnetism goes hand in hand not only for evolution but also for good health dr subaro sir is there yes. any uh, reason for why since we are talking so much about rahu and ketu is there any reason why uh, you know this rahu kalam happens like is there any astronomical reason like on sunday yes, it is evening yes. and monday it is on that comes that comes in in the next part of it the genesis of principles of astrology oh. where astronomy is there even in our uh, hindu culture everything that we do in uh, in our uh, religion is with the background of uh, some uh, uh, principles of astronomy without astronomy there is no hindu culture mm. we follow rahu kalam times as the most inauspicious especially you know specials for doing material things mm. and uh, such as building construction or going for some uh, job uh, giving an application for job or putting in an application for employment or for studies and we say let the raw kalam to pass mm. the reason is every day there is some particular amount of time that is inauspicious for material doings god has an afforded an opportunity for us to at least to devote that one and a half hours unfit for material deeds good enough and auspicious for spiritual activity they don't interfere so this one and a half hours of time every day in a week is actually an opportunity afforded to the human being to devote for spiritual i see Rahu and Ketu together 
if they are joined because wherever rahu is there there will be ketu the head and the tail so they are considered as one unit the remaining seven planets and this one together will be eight planets so 24 hours in a day divided for eight planets rahu and ketu together will get three hours oh okay and rahu gets one and a half hours this one and a half hours is not strictly one and a half hours it is the difference between the time between sunrise and sunset that difference is actually divided by eight and they are called octants and one octant is left for rahu and the other octants are for the other planets therefore rahu is affected in other planets because there are seven days in a week what is rahu is affected on monday means for one and a half hours the octant of moon so okay. this is how one and a half hours daily approximately exactly speaking sunlight my sun sun sunrise minus uh, sunrise and sunset difference divided by 8 is actually the okay the length of the day divided by 8 yes definitely mm-hmm. that's called the 8 octants okay so we moment one octant first octant and start from 7:30 oh okay okay for rahu kalam okay yes. 7:30 to 9 on monday Nine. But immediately you find Rahu Kalam coming on Saturday, which is the seventh day, sixth day in the week. Okay. <laughs> There are also the sequence. You find it the astronomically based. Okay. Good. Here I would uh, say the genesis of the principles of astrology is again based on another concept, an assumption of the all the planets. are situated in the aries at the beginning of the universe oh okay all the planets except rahu who is 180 degrees away in libra zero degrees correct exactly so with the first day of the universe beginning of the universe these planets have been set into motion mm-hmm. all the theories the panch siddhantika the five siddhantas that is the paulisa pitamaha romaka saura vasista these five siddhartas are called are the theory behind the entire astronomy and astrology hindu astrology therefore at the beginning of these things this is the assumption all the planets were in celestial conjunction in aries zero degree except rahu who is at zero degree in libra so it is if they consider that aries is the lagna for deriving all the principles of astrology and later on they regularized it and made it universal for all the astrology class wow therefore from aries the third house sixth house tenth house eleventh house are owned by mercury and saturn respectively are only from aries but they are given for all the lagnas wherever the moon mars is from the natal mars the moon should not be in the third and the sixth houses from that point those three the third and sixth houses the third and ninth houses are different from uh, different point of uh, mars hmm therefore okay. they are made universal later interesting yes. you have exactly. taken you have taken a you know great deal of effort i should congratulate you on <laughs> the slides i mean the slides are extraordinary quality and you know information you know informative also at the same time thank you so much for uh, spending so much time okay so next uh, topic we will start the genesis of principles we will take up one principle after the other okay uh, with its rationale behind the whole thing okay okay such as the house significations the lordship of the houses okay special aspects of planets okay uh, vimsotri dasha system planetary periods very good everything in that every principle of astrology is based purely on this background with this assumption that all the planets were in celestial conjunction in the aries except rahu at the time of swetavarah kalpa the beginning so thank you for the patient hearing of yes. all <laughs>
it's uh, you know it is a great pleasure listening to you sir and i'm sure uh, my, you know my viewers on this channel will be expecting more from you so next week uh, you know we'll again it's a thursday right so uh, it's a guru vara and so we are listening to a great guru uh, of both astronomy and astrology so who else can do this better than you so we'll be waiting for more information and uh, uh viewers please leave your comments uh, beneath this uh, video so that we can also have your feedback and then we can see like what else can we uh, do in the next uh, series of videos that we are going to do with uh, dr yv subbaro doctor thank you so much for being with us it's been a great you know time and hope to see you in the next week okay thank you thank very you. much for the opportunity no. we are really honored to have you here with us okay we have come to the end of this video in case you have any doubts please type them out in the comment section and whenever i find the time i'll answer them for you and see you soon in my next video